great day so far on this good Friday. Uh, it has been forever since I got to spend some time with you guys live. So I thought, let's go live today. Let's hang out and let's see what's going on. Um, if you will, make sure if you are watching me live, make sure to hit up in the comments where you're from. I would love to know that and how you're doing on this Good Friday. So, um, for those of you who are on social media, if you are on our Facebook group, you know that we have a challenge this month to make a pair of circular brick stitch earrings. So, I figured it would be a fun day to do that. Uh, Amanda says, love your glasses. Thank you very, very much. I love these as well. So, let's talk about what we're going to need. We are going to need seed beads. These are awesome stash buster earrings because you can use up extras of like your size 8 seed beads, your size 11 seed beads, so they are fantastic to use up extra little beads. Now the only other thing you'll need as far as a bead or a finding, you're going to need some ear wires, you are going to need some little tiny jump rings like a four millimeter, and you are going to need some solid rings, okay? <clears throat> I've gotten so many questions over the years about, um, you know, well, what can I use? Uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, you really can brick stitch around anything. That's what I love about this stitch. So, um, we sell lots of different things that you can use on there. Um, so, this is one. This is a 25 millimeter solid ring. Um, they are called uh, solid rings in the Quick Links system. These are made by the Beat Along Company. Okay, you can use these. I have these little 12 millimeters that you can use. Again, they are from the Beat Along Company. We have these beautiful hammered solid rings. Okay, so I have a 20 millimeter and I have a 30 millimeter in these. So these are awesome. And then if you don't necessarily want to use a circular piece, you can use something different. Say like these here, something like these. Let me put, put a white background here behind it. And something like these okay so you really can brick stitch around anything so that's the fun thing so hello everybody getting lots of comments about my glasses thank you so much i love my glasses so i'm gonna turn my camera around really quickly so if you get motion sickness just look away for a moment here while i flip the camera around and we get started on the project today <clears throat> So, I have a little assortment here of a size 8 seed beads. Let me get my camera set up and going here. So, I've got a good little assortment of 8s, and then I have some 11s. I'm going to be using some 6-pound fire line today, although you can use your 1G or whatever you want. And I have a little pair of these nippers by the Beadsmith Company. So, <clears throat> I wanted to show you a couple of different samples. You can see these are made on these um, 30 millimeter rings. They are solid colors, really, really fun there. But then I wanted to show you also where, this is a, an E-class I offered this past weekend. These are um, the Bunty earrings. I do have some kits left for these, but you can see it's brick stitch. So, it's really, really fun to do. So, I'm actually going to do a smaller version today. So, I'm going to be using these 20 millimeter hammer solid rings to do these. Um, you can use anywhere from a 10 millimeter and on up. Um, okay, so my people are already commenting about the nails. The nails are those um, Color Street nail strips. So, I've got my needle threaded with two yards of thread. And I'm going to work with one ring at a time. So it just so happens that both sides of this ring are textured. Um, it doesn't matter if one side is textured and one is not. You can choose which side you want on the front when you finish. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to go through that circle. And I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to have just a little bit of a tail here. Oh, hey, Sue Crosley. So good to hear from you. Glad you're on here. And I'm just going to tie 
this on here. Patricia says that she is uh, joining us for the first time. Hello, Patricia. Thanks for joining today. Oh, Kimberly's on here. Kimberly was in the bunty earring class. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see here I've got it tied onto that ring. Now, I'm going to start on with one color. You can do multicolors. Like, this would be a great one to throw stuff in and just do, like, a confetti earring. So, these are going to be really fun to do. So, I'm going to pick up two beads. You can use 11s. You can use 8s. You can use whatever you want. But I'm doing 8 here. And I am kind of putting my fingers here inside of this little circle to hold on to it. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to stick it through the circle that I have there. Okay. Now, when I pull the thread, let me put this back on here. Carol Guterman is here. Carol makes those wonderful, the board that I use uh, uh, every so often that has little holes in it. I love it. So, I've got these two beads. Now, when I pull the thread through, you can see that I am not letting any any of the beads come on this side. All my beads are staying on this side of the project, and that's what you want. The beads don't ever need to come to the inside. So, now I'm going to take my needle, and I'm going to go right up through the second bead here that I had threaded on. So, this is the first bead, and this is the second bead. Now, if you go through it backwards and you go through it this way, you're going to see a thread across. So, you don't want that. You're just going to take your needle and you are going to go straight up through the bead just like this. And when you do, your beads will stand to attention just like this. The first one's going to sit just a little long and that's okay. We'll fix that at the very end so you don't have to worry about that bead if it sits a little funky. So thank you to everybody who's joining me live today on this beautiful day. Okay, I have one bead. I'm only going to pick up one at this point each time I do it. Again, I'm going to stick my needle through the hole here and you can see I'm using my thumb and my finger to kind of cover up the rest of that hole. So when I pull the thread, the bead does not go into that little hole. I'll take my needle and go straight up through that bead. Thread on one bead. Go through my loop here. And then I go up through the bead. Okay. Hello, Paula. I know, I know. I, I've been missing doing my lives, but life has been crazy. Hello, Shirley Moore. Okay, and I'm just going to go up through the bead. So, basically, you can see that using this white thread here, my white thread is um, allowing it to not see the thread very much on the silver. So if I was using black, then you would see that thread there. So you want to pay attention to the color thread that you use. Now, if I wanted to, I could definitely throw in and I, I use like a pink. Um, that would be kind of fun to use if you have colors. So like this is 1G. So color thread can really change up how it looks as well. So that's the fun thing about it. Now, I'm going to go just a little bit quicker here. If any of you have any, you know, questions about this project, about materials, or just general questions, you know, make sure to type them in and let me know. Hello to everybody joining first time. So glad you guys are here. Last year, at the beginning of COVID, I did lives every day. Um, Monday through Friday for about two and a half months. And so we got this awesome little community together. And I miss being able to hang out with all of you every day like that. So you can see here what it's turning out. And again, I can use any size bead. It does not have to be an eight. I could do this with an 11. I don't 
don't think I would go up to sixes just because the sixes would get kind of floppy. You could also do 15s, whatever you wanted to do. But this goes pretty fast. The biggest thing is you want to try to pick beads that are consistent in their size. Because if you see here, you see that I've got a bead here that's just a little bit bigger than all the other beads. And you can see how much that's going to change or you can see how much that elevation changes. And you will be able to see that in the next row if I'm not just super careful here. So <clears throat> I'm just going to keep walking along. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> Here in North Carolina, everything is blooming out. <clears throat> and my poor old allergies have about had it. Helen says she made one of my rings and that's what got started her beating. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay, so I've got just about probably six more beads, and I will be back to the beginning. And again, if you mess up, that's okay. Just pull it out. No biggie. It has been... Um, pretty good up until last night. It got down to 29 last night and it's supposed to get down to 28 tonight. So it's a bit chilly. Yep. Debbie, thank you. So she placed an order um, this morning because it is free shipping. Friday. So a couple of people are saying um, that the picture is not clear, um, but I'm looking at it on my computer and it's clear, so I'm not sure what to tell you guys. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see here. You can see here now, I am really back close to where I started. And you can see here that there's one bead length here. So I'm going to pick up my one bead. I'm going to go through the loop here. Okay, then I'm gonna go up through the bead just like I normally would. Okay, now this is the last bead I added and this is the first bead. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go down through the first bead. Okay, so I'm coming out of the last bead. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go down through the first bead. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through the ring and then up through that same bead again. So you see now that makes everything sit exactly the way it needs to. And I have my beads in place. So depending on the ring size, depending on your size bead, that's gonna determine how many beads you're gonna have in this little first row. So now I'm gonna to go to my second color. So when we do this, you'll see here, when I hold it this way, you'll see that I have little pieces of thread that connect each of the beads here along the outer edge. So I'm going to use two beads and the bead that I'm coming out of right here, it does not matter if I start working to the left or to the right, but whichever way I work, I'm going to continue in that direction. So for me, I'm going to work to the right. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go under the thread bridge here. All right, under this first thread bridge. And I'm going to pull this through. And again, 
just like if we would have had a ring here, these beads don't need to come to this side. They need to stay on this side of that little bridge. So when I pull this down, I'm just gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go right up through the bead right above where my thread is coming out. Pick up one bead from this point on and I go under that very next thread bridge. Now, the thing about this project is you are going to have to work some increasing brick stitch. Um, we may have to do it on this row. <clears throat> if we do, I am going to definitely show you how to do it. We definitely have to do it on the next row, okay? So I'm just going to continue to pick up a bead, go under the thread bridge, and up through the bead. Pick up a bead, go under the thread bridge, and through the bead. Now, when I do this one, you can see here that that bead, instead of sitting straight up and down like these, you can see how it kind of sits to the side. That tells me that there I should have done an increase right here. So I'm just going to back out of this. So I'm going to pull my needle back through. And I'm going to come back under that thread bridge. And I'm going to work what's called an increase. So I'm going to take the needle. It still has the bead on there. And instead of coming to this next thread bridge, I'm going to go under the same thread bridge that I was just went under. Hello to everybody who's joining us. We are working on the circular brick stitch earrings today. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go right up through the bead. And now it sits exactly like it should. So when I pick up my bead this time, I go under the thread bridge. Now this is not the same thread bridge. The same thread bridge is over here. This was my next thread bridge, okay? So same thing, if I try to come way over here, that bead is gonna sit sideways instead of sitting straight up and down like you need it to. So this is kind of how you can notice when you need to work an increase. If your beads don't sit straight up and down like this and they sit to the side, then you're going to know I should have worked an increase. And you can just pull the bead out and add that increase. So if you're doing it with size 11 seed beads, you might have to do um, more increases than what I would do in a normal row here. You can see now what's turning out. Good, Erica, I am so glad that, you, that you've that you seen what you've done wrong. That's awesome. Erica, you're going to have to hop in your car and come down the mountain and come see me. Okay. So, what did I do here? Okay. I missed the bead. <clears throat> Lord help. Okay. So again, I don't think I'm ready for an increase yet. But, I, and look, you see how it's sitting? It's not sitting straight up and down like it should. So I should have put that increase there. So I'm just going to back out. Kind of pull this so I can make sure that I don't pierce any threads. And now I'm going to do the increase. So from where I'm at right here, instead of coming over here, I'm going to go under the same thread bridge. Hello, hello to everybody joining me today. We are doing circular brick stitch earrings. Now, if I wanted to, I could always stop right here and maybe work, um, you know, like a little section here here or whatever I wanted to do. Something like I did here. You can see that I did a row of brick stitch and then I did another row with embellishments. So if you wanted to, you could stop here. You don't have to go all the way around. That's the fun thing about this circular brick stitch project is there's lots and lots of variations that you can do. Okay, and you see, look what happened. Whoops, look what happened right there. 
again, it sits sideways. So that just tells me I'm going to have to work an increase. All right. So that's your biggest thing. Just pay attention to the way that your beads are laying and you'll be able to tell those increases. Okay, and you can see there how they're laying that way and how they're laying this way. Oh, Kimberly, I love, Kimberly said she started watching Father Brown to find out who Bunty is. Kimberly, I am a addicted, addicted to Father Brown. I got Brit Box just to watch Father Brown. I love that show. I love me a good cozy mystery anyway, so that just, the characters on there are all fantastic. Okay, so you can see, I'm going to count, when we go around, I'm going to count my peach beads, and then I'm going to count these um, kind of greenish teal color beads so that you can see how many beads we actually increased. Oh, Shirley Moore says she's watched all of Father Brown on Netflix. Oh, Shirley, I know. Chandra says she watched it. Jenny. Oh, I love it. Oh, y'all are my people. I love it. I love Father Brown. I'm kind of getting, um, I think they said this next season is maybe only going to be like just a few episodes, but then they're signed on to do a whole nother big season. So I'm excited about that. I used to love uh, Grant Chester as well. It was another really, really great um, kind of mystery series to watch. Um, but I don't know if they're renewed or not. Okay, so I'm getting back. You can see here I'm almost back to the front. <clears throat> And if you miss, you know, if you if you kind of look at one and it's sitting just a little sideways or something and you go, uh-oh, you know, maybe I should have fixed that, then it's okay. Just take your needle off and start pulling your beads off. It's, it's you know, not a biggie. There's no specific set number of beads that you have to have on the row. <clears throat> Oh, farmer's market murders. Oh, I'll have to check that out. I love it. I'm list I've been reading uh, the Coffee House Mystery series right now. Okay, guys, so you can see here I just put on a bead, and there's not really enough room here to put another bead. And kind of if I lay them down close to each other there they're going to be exactly how they need to be. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go down through the first bead. So this is the last bead. And I'm going to go down through that first bead there. Trudy says her hubby, her and her hubby love all the British shows. Me too. Okay, so I'm going to go up through that last bead. And I'm going to pull these threads and you can see now what I've got. Now, it's just a little open, you know, just a little bit of room here in between. And that's completely okay. We'll cover that up on the next little go round. But I did want to show you. So, this first row, we put on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so we put on 23 in the first row. For this next row, we actually put on, um, let's see, I want to, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so we put on 23 in the first row. For this next row, we actually put on, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, wait a minute, ah, my needle came out. Let me stick it back in, or I'll forget where I was. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. So you can see there we added quite a few more beads on this row doing those increases than we did the last row. 
So now you can pretty much continue doing as many rows as you want to. It doesn't have to be two, three, four, whatever. So I'm going to do a different color. So again, just from where I'm coming out, I'm going to go under that first thread bridge there. And I will start to work another round. I'm loving my colors here today. I, I felt like it was Easter weekend. We needed a nice little Easter project or a nice little Easter colors. I may end up putting these. We've got one of those little free libraries now out in front of the store. So I may end up finishing these off and putting those in the little free library for somebody to snag over the weekend. Oh, yeah, I'm happy with these. I like the colors. So it looks like somebody said Midsummer Murders and Miss, Miss Fisher's Mysteries. Oh, I'm going to have to check them out. Definitely, definitely have to check that out. <clears throat> yeah, I think these are just going to have three, three little sections on them. I don't think I'm going to do any more rows than three. I think these will be good. So again, as you work this row, if you feel like you need some increases, go ahead and put you some increases in there. And um, for those of you who get who are on my email list and get my emails, um, I sent out a recipe earlier this week for a like peanut butter dessert. And man, if y'all want to knock some people's socks off for Easter this year, that is, oh, it's awesome. Okay, Linda says she's watched Agatha Christie. Uh, Helen says that she is a fan of Hercule. Oh, I'll have to look that up. I will definitely have to look that up. That's why I like our lives. We can We can find out some good stuff here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wee wee. I might even just change this one up a little bit. I'll get around here and we'll see. Country Cooking School Mysteries. Oh, Lord. I am going to have... So many suggestions I'm going to have to find. And talking about food. Yes, we are. Polly, you should know that we are all about the food. <laughs> okay. So, so far, this is what I got. I think I'm going to add just a few more beads here. Oh, I love, uh, Carol says, try the Hallmark Channel. Oh, Carol, I do. Um, I love the ones that Candace Cameron Bure is in. Um, let me think what that one is. I love the crossword mystery series that Lacey Chavet, Chavere, Chavet is in. Um, oh, Aurora Tea Garden. I love Aurora Tea Garden on the Hallmark Channel. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. And I think I'm going to work off of this. Um, I think I'm going to work a row off. No, I'm just going to finish it. Just keep going, Kelly. This is marble. Mm, man, y'all are my people. I love it. We've started a new book club here. Uh, uh, there's a group of about six or eight of us here in the, our county that have started a new book club. And the first book we're reading is Where the Crawdads Sing. So I have read it. It is a marvelous book. I absolutely adored it. But um, I, I said, well, I'm just going to have to reread it because it has been a while since I read it. Hello to everybody joining in. Somebody's from LA. Somebody's from New York. I just seen jumping in. Let's 
Sue, oh, Sue Crosley, yes. Sue uh, can give you some majorly good um, cozy mystery book series. Man, she's got some good recommendations. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, my mom, I see some of you saying that that's an awesome book. My mom is in the book club as well. And so she told me on Thursday, she said, Kelly, she said, I read one chapter on Tuesday night, one chapter on Wednesday morning, and then I read the whole book Wednesday. I finished it about midnight. I was like, oh my goodness. I said, Mama, you've read the book. She said, yeah, but I had to keep going. It's just so good. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I'm almost back to the beginning here, and we're going to cinch these bad boys together, and then we'll be ready to go. Now, I will tell you, I'm not loving this row. This row's getting kind of wonky, and what it is, is I think I've done one too many increases in this row. Um, and that's why it's kind of getting a little floppy on me here on this one. So I may just kind of work it out a little bit. Work out some of that. There we go. That's looking better. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nope, Paula, Mama is not in here today. Uh, she has my little boy Grayson today. They got out of school for Good Friday. So I'm sure Mama has her hands full with Grayson today. <laughs> okay, so you can see here I've added the last bead for the row. Here's the first bead for the row. So I'm just going to take my needle and I'm going to come down through that bead. And then up through that last bead again. Now, here's where you really can have fun. Okay, you can do some dangles down here if you want to. You can um, do single beads, kind of like I've done here on these earrings. Or no, these earrings I did three, little loops of three. Um, these earrings, I did little single beads sticking out of them. Um, let me see. I have a pair of nickel ones on here today. And you can see I just did one little bead here on each end of those. So you can see you've got lots of fun things that you can do here. So if you want to do just a single bead, all you would need to do is pick up one bead and go right back down through the same bead again. And it looks just like that. And then I would just go up through the next bead. Thread on one bead. And go down through the very same bead. Now, if I wanted to do, like, say, arches of three. Let's see. Hmm. Trying to decide what I want to do here. If I wanted to do little arches of three, I could pick up three beads and go through the next bead here. Just like that. And then I could come up. And then you could just work around doing your little arches of three. Going down. And coming up. Now, one thing you could also do if you wanted to is you could take and you could do a fringe. Um, so I would probably say, you know, I'm just going to pick up just a random number here. <clears throat> you could also use your bigger beads for this, but you could also work a fringe. <coughs> Somebody says, can you use this with DB, which is Delica beads? Yes, you absolutely can do Delica beads. You can use triangle beads. You can use whatever you want. So you can see here, I did a little fringe. Um, I, obviously, I wouldn't do the fringe with Fireline. I would do it with like a 1G, but you could also do fringe with it. Um, there's all sorts of little embellishment techniques that you could do um, using your size 11 C beads once you have that done. Now, 
all I have to do, or all I did to finish it out, once I get all the way around and I've done my embellishments the way I wanted them to, then all I have to do is come out of one of these little size 11 seed beads. And you can see here, I added just a little tiny jump ring and attach my ear wire to that. You could also use a um, wire protector. Um, if you could even do something similar to like what I've done here, you can see I come off the top and I put a little bead with some little beads around it. So, you know, you can really kind of do whatever you want because, I mean, look how pretty that would be as a topper to that. So there's lots of options that you have once you do your brick stitch earrings. There's lots of options as to how to do this and how to put your topper on. Oh, my friend Joy's here. Hey, girl. So... There you are, my friends. That's how easy it is to make these circular brick stitch earrings. So it's a good project to work on this weekend. I mean, we got the time, hopefully. Um, so thankfully, we're not in lockdown, or most of us aren't. So um, these are going to be really, really fun pieces to work on. So I do hope that you guys will send me a picture of your finished pieces or post them on, uh, if you're on social media, post them in our Facebook group so that we can see what you guys come up with for your circular brick stitch earrings. I do have the pattern for this on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com as well as a few kits left on the website. And today, uh, which is uh, April, Friday, April the 2nd, 2021. <laughs> Um, it is free shipping Friday on the website. So if you shop at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com, you um, spend over $10, you ship it within the U.S., and it's free shipping automatically taken off at the register. And that is today only on the website. And thank you so much. I love my glasses. The glasses come from Zenny Optical. The earrings are um, the circular brick stitch, of course, and the bracelets are the everybody's hubbling bracelets that are here on my YouTube channel, or you can find the pattern on my website. Again, that's off the beaded path beadstore.com. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your good Friday, a happy Easter weekend, and um, get out and enjoy. It's beautiful here. So get out and enjoy if you can. And uh, you guys have a great one. And hopefully we'll see you again really soon. I will be here Monday for a new project. And just so you know, on Monday, I'm going to be using hoop earrings, 35 millimeter hoop earrings. Again, it's free shipping Friday. If you needed to grab any of those, I'm also going to be using some 26 gauge beading wire and uh, some size 11 seed beads. So another fun, quick project coming up on Monday. So you guys have a fabulous 